Today, we are going to return and finish the investigation on who murdered Tim Kono. Now, I know that there were questions on when would the Only Murderers Part 2 video come out, and I guess this is technically Part 2, but I intended it on it being Part 3. I filmed, fully edited, a video on episodes four, five, and six, but when it downloaded, I guess there was a glitch or something happened while it was downloading, and it only saved the first nine minutes of the video and fully left out the remaining 15. In episodes four, five, and six, Trio basically was investigating different people, different avenues that Tim Kono was dealing with. They thought the killer was Sting. Surprise, it wasn't Sting. And we learned that Tata Guy is Mabel's friend Oscar from her little Hardy Boys group. He went to go see Tim Kono, but he heard the gunshot in the room when Tim died and then he ran away. And then eventually we find out that Tim is like trying to bust some jewel thief. It took a really weird turn in episode 5, <laughs> but Tim was looking for the ring that Zoe or Chloe or some Oe was wearing the night that she died. And it turns out that the association they think has to do with like the Euro guy. So basically they think that like everybody that they know is behind the murder. And I guess today we're gonna find out who it actually is. My theory is if it was the guy selling the euros who's sponsoring, is it euros or is it just sandwiches? Maybe like the ring that Zoe stole belonged to his grandmother and he tried to get it off of her and she wouldn't give it back because that sounds like something her character would do. There's still four episodes left, so I doubt that it's him, but we will find out today. And that's what you missed. Hey. I'm still pretty like 50-50 on the jokes. Some of them are really good. Some of them are just kind of cringy. Oh yeah, the, the the cop lady from episode one, she suddenly reappears and I guess she listens to the podcast and she realizes that there were pieces of evidence that weren't turned in during the investigation. So she sends Tim Kono's phone to Mabel. Is this entire episode going to be in subtitles? If I wanted to read subtitles, I would have watched Squid Game on this channel. <laughs> Will contribute to the overall storyline, given the fact that he is deaf. Like, what does he know about his dad, his dad's business? How involved is he? How much more does he know than other characters assume? Like, other characters probably assume that he doesn't really know what's going on because he is deaf. But I don't know why he is so interested in this investigation. Because clearly he knows that Mabel, Charles, and Oliver are investigating the murder. But why is he so involved? Is he the killer? Or are we supposed to think that he is the one who killed Tim Kono? I like that. <laughs> He's breaking into their apartment at the same time they're breaking into his apartment. Also, I'm really glad that they're focusing more on the actual mystery side of the show now rather than making jokes every other second. That's something that I said in the second video. It feels like they're focusing more on the quantity of jokes per episode than more on the quality of jokes. So I'm glad that this is like a nice tonal shift. Also, they're not speaking, even when the guy isn't there. We're still not hearing dialogue. I hope this isn't insensitive, but how does he listen to the podcast? Is there subtitles on it? I think that they do have like that shady side jewelry business, but I don't think that they killed anybody. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? I like that they're portraying this character as someone who can clearly handle himself and look after himself, but the characters around him are treating him as if he needs the extra help. And it's getting to the point where it's hurting the people that are like, I look after you, and he's not listening to what, oh, what's his name? Is it like Billy or something? He's not listening to what Billy is trying to tell him about the podcast people being on to them. So far, not a whole lot to commentate on in this episode, challenging me to think of something creative to talk about. Does everybody in the show know how to sign? I wish that was something that we were taught in American schools. That's such a useful skill. 
Oh yeah, okay, hold on, let me talk about this. So in episode four, they went on their like first, and she said something that really kind of pissed me off a little bit. You know, the sharing of stories is kind of transactional. When someone gives you a story, you owe them one of equal or greater value in return. And it really triggered me because I feel like when you're in a conversation with somebody, the point should not be sharing an equal or greater experience from your own life. Like the, if it, it really just depends on what the other person is looking for. If someone is going through something and you share a similar experience, it can help you like bond and realize that you're not alone in that sort of thing. But if every time you enter a conversation with somebody and you're just seeking for a way to share your own story, then it kind of becomes like a competition between you two. Because rather than just sitting and listening to the other person, maybe they just kind of want to vent or just verbally process something that they've been through. You're not listening to them. You're just thinking of, okay, what have I been through? Okay, now it's my turn to talk. Let me think. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's kind of what we're taught to do is respond with our own story instead of just being there to comfort somebody who needs it. Okay, rant over. A lovely stairway to the stars. It would be heaven to climb. Gross. What like an old person way to imply that you're horny. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just fuck already. <laughs> I mean, are you a grave robber if they're not in the grave yet? Why are you pulling me? I'm right! Okay, you class this little mean person. So it was truly an accident. Yo, she pushed herself off the roof. It wasn't his fault. Maybe that looks bad if you walk in at the wrong time. I understand how that's really hard because you feel like you're to blame in that situation. But that was 100% her fault. I have no sympathy here. <laughs> I knew he didn't kill her. He just is like a shitty person, you know? Why doesn't he just tell the truth? It wasn't his fault. Like, yeah, they would interrogate him for a while, but they would eventually come to the conclusion it was an accident. This is so dramatic. Rich people are dramatic. I bet Mabel and Oliver are like, dude, we are escaping a killer and you are doing the devil's tango. Come on. Oh, hey, noise. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But we still don't know who killed Tim. I guess it's likely if Angel and Theo knew that Tim was trying to out them as criminals that they killed him. We call ourselves the Arconiacs. We met on a message board, the itty bitty omit bitty committee, which I founded. Ever since Fallon, omit B has been having a moment, but we are the day oneers. Mental illness, you hate to see it. Theo, 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 listen to me. I, oh, I'm sorry. I know that was insensitive. It's a touchy subject. I <laughs> Dude, no. <laughs> I mean, I know I made that joke earlier. But you didn't make it to his face. Because your podcast needs to end. We know what you did to Tim Kono. We don't know shit about Tim Kono. I mean, they don't know what he did. They know that they blackmailed him, but they don't know if he killed him. Here's what I'd like. To wake up tomorrow morning, say 7 a.m., to find a final episode of the show I so generously fund and hear that you are wrong. I'm just a guy with some delis. I would hate to see any more bad things happen to the tenants in his building. Just make a podcast outing them for everything and then move to Arizona. Oh my god, do we have fans? Oh thank god we have fans. Where's <laughs> <laughs> He's he's gonna let like the fame of it overtake his fear of being killed, you know? Homemade pizza rolls. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, what I if she did it? <laughs> what what if like she is like has a relationship with Teddy Dimas and he's like sending her to like spy on them or something and keep track of what they know now? Kids these days, everything is binge, binge, binge. Yeah. They'll never know the pleasure of waiting for just a crumb of what you want. My daughter says I'm not welcome at her wedding. I mean, based on the fact that you're like camped outside of a person's you don't know house, just waiting to harass them on the street, I get why. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm so fun. Uh, thank you. I, I feel like Tim Kono the night that he wrote those suicide notes. Uh. <laughs> what are you planning on doing? <laughs> Tim Kono lives on the ninth floor, but on that night, he got on the elevator with a trash bag from 4-6. Why? 
How did we miss that? Cool, but was it Tim's garbage or was it Teddy's? Did Teddy write those notes? The paper! Suicide notes, yes. But what about the cat? Why aren't we looking more at this man, Howard Morris? That's a great idea! I'm with that. Fun. They were death threats. <sighs> no. Mind blown. That Demises were threatening him, promising to make his death look like a suicide. Mark, Mark, I need you to be Theo Demas, the death son. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> no! <laughs> don't you think it feels a little too easy? I mean, I'd take another look at Howard. She's involved in it. I know it. She's trying to divert their attention somewhere else. Go back. Go back to their room. I would not be in there alone. And find some other interests. It's a big wide world out there. Yeah. We don't need anybody else having parasocial relationships. We saw how Shane Dawson is using it right now. was the day he finally got the evidence that backed up his story. How does it feel to be a bad person and get consequences? It's not them though, because there's still two episodes left. But I feel like it is someone that we know, because there's no way that they would introduce the killer in episode nine, right? Is it Janet? Or Janice? Whatever the fuck her name is. Even though I can't forgive myself for my silence and for all he lost so unfairly. Oh my god. Starting on that. Episode day. eight, we see Tim have a heart. Cox reports back. Tim Kono was poisoned. He was already dead when he was shot. Is she dead? Don't. Please don't. It was Jan. I put all my money on it. Jan? She's alive. She's Jan the killer. Oh, she's dead. Jan! So maybe it wasn't Jan. <laughs> Who is it? Who do we know that's good with like poison stuff? There's no way we haven't met the killer yet. I'm too dumb for this. I need the show to explain to me what the hell is going on. Help! Anybody! But why would someone leave a note on her door if they're just gonna kill her like right after she walks in? You wouldn't say I'm watching you and then immediately harm her. Cause then there's no point of leaving a note. You would just like ambush her or something. That doesn't make sense to me. You should have mentioned Howard to the cops. You need some proof to do that. And I never saw the person. If she never saw the per- if, if you get the note on your door, you would be so on the lookout for anything suspicious. You would see that person. Where is that good guy? You hear that, Brazos? He's still got it. Oh, oh. My gosh, I'm so sorry. What up? Ah! Oh. The fuck? Well, look, we know that Tim threatened Howard with a gun because his cat kept going into Tim's apartment. Who had what incentive if, what, to what kill if, Tim yeah. other than the demons? Aside from the fact that he was a prick. You're missing one very big thing. Motive. This was a crime of passion. Tim Kono was And poison wrong. is a woman's weapon. Sure. It's Jan. Did Jan and Tim have an affair or something? Howard Morris. I may hurt him, or at least speak to him firmly. That's the guy you think is a hardcore murderer? Dude's covered in cat hair. Okay. Hey, cat people can be, uh, uh, mean sometimes. I bought a 12 pound brisket for a dinner party and now no one wants to come because we're the murder building. What am I supposed to do with my brisket now, Brazos? I mean, sandwiches. <laughs> and Evelyn was poisoned with the same poison that killed Tim. Evelyn just probably drank. So, okay, so Tim died, was shot, Evelyn came in and then drank out of the bourbon that had the poison in it and then got its paw prints all in the blood and stuff. Oh, mama. She's probably just helping her change the bandage. What the hell? Of course. It's happening again. Took you less than an hour. My bandage changed. You know, there is something seriously wrong with Bunny. Oh, she is the killer, the killer, and she is just diverting attention to literally anybody else. Oh Howard, Bunny, she's gonna get brisket lady here in a minute. I think she stabbed herself, and she's, she did it in a spot where she knew she would survive if it took a while for someone to find her. I can't wait to know how wrong I am. Here's the thing though, this is the finale, so I'm gonna know very quickly if I'm wrong. <laughs> Who's dying next? Someone else is dying. Is 
I don't want Oscar to die. Is Oscar dying? We saw her standing over like a dead stabbed body, right? I don't think she kills him. So it's someone else. By them. Look, all I know is that it See, goes into See, I think this somewhere. whole like sex oh. toy thing further supports my argument that it's Jan. She's into some weird shit. She's talking about like wearing like furry suits and stuff. But if anyone's wearing an animal suit, it better be you or me. That she likes pretending she's a cat. Yeah, yeah. Exotic instruments. It's going to be the bassoon place, right? It's going to be like an actual instrument. It's to clean the bassoon. <gasps> Oh my god, it's to clean the bassoon. Please tell me I'm right. It sells musical instruments. Why is there a bassoon cleaner in Tim's sex toy box? Oh my god, I love this show. <laughs> I, I don't want, well I do love this show, but I love it more when I'm right. <laughs> this is the finale, baby. If you're having a good time, please like and subscribe to this channel. But let's not rush this. Get to know a fellow a little before he tells you how he died, right? The balance of jokes is a lot better in these last few episodes. So, funny story. You're sleeping with a murderer! I guess, I mean, you gotta kind of break it to- There's no way to ease somebody into that, you know? You just kind of have to say, hey, by the way, your girlfriend's a killer. <laughs> Don't drink it, please. You idiot! Oh, did I leave that here? Uh, we found that in Tim Kona's apartment. It's a bassoon cleaner. Why would Tim have that? She just busted herself. Right. Girl, you are so sus. You just slipped up and we cracked this case wide open. Open like a hooker's legs. I think I would love you even if you did kill Tim Kona. Which is super crazy because I've broken up. I would love you if you did kill Tim Kono. The words of a desperate man for a woman with that good good. <laughs> oh, I'm not drinking at all. I'm taking stage sips because there's poison in it. It's what you did with Tim Kono, right? I'm glad that he's not that stupid. Thank goodness. It's just super exciting to be totally open together. What? Oh, okay, he's heartbroken. And Tim came to see you the day he died. He did. Which was also two days after he broke up. Okay, I'm sorry. She's not really good at this whole psychotic killer part. I love her as like cringy lady down the street who likes to play the bassoon. But this whole like, I killed him, not feeling it. Tell me, tell me, tell me. When did you really start locking in on me? The same handwriting. Is he okay? You stabbed yourself? Hello, I said this two episodes ago. <laughs> Is it not gonna be at all suspicious that she's the girlfriend and then he's dead? Plus she has to kill Maple and Oliver now. This is just so poorly thought through. I'm so, so sorry. She did it. She really killed him. Oh, I thought we knew this already. Sorry, maybe I should be more compassionate. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> She killed her. Bet I'm gonna miss it. It's gonna be a gas. This is why I don't trust people who say it's gonna be a gas. They're always villains. We've been over this. We did this in WandaVision and Agnes said it. She was crazy. And then in Midnight Mass, Beth, she's a killer. Now Jan. <gasps> he recorded it. Oh my God, he's a genius. I feel bad. <laughs> by Sting. <laughs> oh, I love that. It all comes full circle. <laughs> I guess when you live in New York, you see weirder things. Is he not attached to the thing that should be attached to? What are you even saying? I'm pulling the thing out here. Did it not occur to any of them to just call 911? Yeah, we did it. Oh, you really did it. Get down here. This is so corny. It's Look there's good you. corn and there's Take bad me. corn. Indulge me. I've always wanted to do this. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Who shall I kill? Maybe it's you. You won't shoot my friends. Shoot me if you need to, but not them. Hold Was he pretending that whole time? Before this. 
She's just gonna kill someone in the middle of the monologue, I hope. Some walking around. Just shoot him. <laughs> Wait, if there's a lot of gas in that building, that gunshot should have set the air on fire. One of my favorite movies is Clue from 1985, and this has a very similar feel to the ending of it. Oh, I just want him to be happy. You know, I'm thinking of putting myself out there again. I mean, I slept with a murderer. That is a great story to tell on a first date. Maybe wait till the second or third one. Does anyone else feel like there's still a couple of loose ends? No. Please don't force any loose ends on me. <laughs> I can't take being wrong. Get out of the building now. Whose number is this? I don't know. Okay, this is getting scary. What is going on? We gotta get Mabel. What? 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 I can't, I can't take this anymore. This is from the, this is the first episode. <gasps> Not what you think. Buddy! Why do they look so happy to see their favorite people get taken away in handcuffs? Anybody want to tell me what just happened? <laughs> this time it's definitely Howard. <laughs> well, I guess that is it for Only Murders Season 1. Final thoughts, good show. It had its weaker moments. Overall, I think I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It was really, really strong in that last half of the season. So maybe seven and a half out of 10. Early on, the jokes were really 50-50, but at the end, I think it finished really strong. Maybe I'm just in a better mood today. I'm not feeling as much of a bitch. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that is it for season one. And I guess there's gonna be season two. So if you wanna see my commentary videos on those, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I will see you guys next week. Thank y'all so much. Flourish.